He was the sole witness to one of the most tragic events in recent memory. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're examining the most infamous and shocking behind the scenes stories in TV history. We will be excluding news channels, TV journalism, and sports. Number one, would you say hello to Cheryl, please? We're going to have a great time together, Cheryl. The abuse of David Yost. Right there, Tom! 90s kids have fond memories of Power Rangers, but making the show was not as fun as watching it. At least not for Blue Ranger David Yost. A gay man, Yost was reportedly harassed by producers and crew members for his sexual orientation. The harassment got so bad that Yost harbored thoughts of self-harm and eventually quit the show altogether. After leaving the program, Yost attempted to alter his sexuality through conversion therapy, and later suffered a nervous breakdown. After spending some time in a psychiatric institution, Yost accepted his sexuality and has since returned to the Power Rangers community. She's a kid. She's a kid, Billy! She doesn't need to know that we're Power Rangers. She needs to know that Rita Repulsa killed her mom. The franchise has also not been kind to Allison McGinnis, the pink Lightspeed Ranger who broke her leg while training for a dangerous stunt. The death of John Eric Hexum. I was in Special Forces Fort Benning, Georgia. They uh, came in and looked us over. About as uncomfortable as what you're doing here. Between September 1984 and April 1985, CBS aired an action thriller called Cover Up. It starred John Eric Hexum as Mac Harper, a former Green Beret who's hired by a fashion photographer to find her husband's killers. On October 12, 1984, Hexum was waiting on set when he got bored and began playing with a gun loaded with blanks. He unloaded all but one blank and played a round of Russian roulette. Not knowing how dangerous this was, he pulled the trigger and fired a blank straight into his temple. The shot fractured his skull and caused an enormous brain hemorrhage. Unfortunately, the damage was too great to repair, and Hexum died six days later. Clean Crawford's unfortunate behavior. I mean, that was the biggest nerve I think I've yeah, ever seen. You're the biggest crybaby I've ever met in my life. In 2016, Fox began airing a Lethal Weapon show based on the iconic film series. Roger Murtaugh and Martin Riggs were back after nearly 20 years, and they were respectively played by Damon Wayans and Clayne Crawford. Unfortunately, the latter caused a slew of problems on set. Crawford was reportedly known for his angry outbursts, which made those around him uncomfortable. One instance even resulted in studio-appointed therapy and Crawford giving up some of his paycheck to the afflicted party. It was all too much for the cast and crew, many of whom voiced their displeasure at working with Crawford, and he was fired at the end of the second season. Murtaugh is without a Riggs. A Lethal Weapon star leaves the action series after multiple accounts of bad behavior on set, including endangering his fellow castmates. The Fall of Louis C.K. I go to my daughter's school to uh, volunteer sometimes. My daughter goes to a public school. And I volunteer not because I'm a good person, but because you have to, because nobody works there. While he's primarily known for his stand-up, Louis C.K. also found great success on television, especially with his surreal Emmy-winning Louis. The series entered an indefinite hiatus in 2015 at the end of its fifth season, with C.K. planning on returning to it at some point in the future. But that changed when the comedian was accused of inappropriate sensual behavior. The story began that very year, when fellow comedian Roseanne Barr shared some nasty rumors about CK's secret behavior. These rumors were confirmed two years later in the midst of the Me Too movement, and CK admitted his transgressions. As a result, FX cut all ties with their star, and Louis was canceled. News this morning about the comedian Louis CK, who has come out to say that the accusations against him are in fact true. The $1.98 Beauty Show. And now a lovely young lady who is truly one of television's brightest stars from the show One Day at a Time, Mackenzie Phillips. The 70s were certainly a different time, one in which producers thought laughing at people would make for appropriate television. The $1.98 Beauty Show was a parody of beauty pageants, 
with contestants demeaning themselves for less than $2 in prize money and a bouquet of rotten vegetables. Much of the humor came at the expense of the contestants, with host Rip Taylor, announcer Johnny Jacobs, and a group of celebrity panelists often ripping into their physical appearance. When an overweight woman is comedically called a, quote, tow truck, you know things have gone too far. The show was viciously criticized for being mean-spirited and canceled after two seasons. Molly measures 35, 25, 35. Molly says that she has a tremendous love for horses, which is probably the reason why she's been divorced twice. The allegations against Dan Schneider. Well, um, better get going. Oh, and be careful. Why be careful? You may not know his name, but you certainly know his TV shows. A successful producer, Schneider created some of the most iconic Nickelodeon programs of all time, including Drake and Josh, iCarly, and Zoe 101. If you can name a Nickelodeon sitcom, chances are that Schneider made it. But this prosperous relationship came to an end in 2018 when Nickelodeon fired Schneider for inappropriate behavior. This included a long history of temper issues, angry outbursts, and an alleged foot fetish that saw him posting photos of his actress's feet. New allegations emerged a few years later, claiming that Schneider would ask for massages and was prone to gender discrimination. I see the problem. Oh, do ya! A workplace hazard. Bryce Dion was killed in August 2014. He had followed Omaha police into a Wendy's where a robbery was taking place. Cops has been a TV staple since 1989 and has aired well over 1,000 episodes in that time. The premise is simple. A small camera crew follows everyday cops and films them doing their job. Usually, the show consists of minor things like public drunkenness and drug arrests, but sometimes things get tragically heated. On the night of August 26, 2014, a crew operating in Omaha responded to a robbery at a local Wendy's. The police opened fire on the suspect and accidentally hit the cop's audio technician, Bryce Dion. Dion was hit by a stray bullet and rushed to the hospital, but he quickly died of his injuries. Dion's brother later sued the city of Omaha, but his case was dismissed. An 11-page lawsuit claims negligence on the part of the Omaha Police Department and asked the city for payment to the heartbroken family of Dion. The firing of Roseanne Barr. Roseanne's history with these sort of remarks in regards to African Americans had already been documented, and yet, uh, you know, the network decided to reboot her show anyway. We mentioned Roseanne Barr in the Louis C.K. entry, but she also has been the subject of her own controversies. Barr was the creator and star of Roseanne, which was one of the most popular sitcoms of the late 80s and 90s. It was so popular, in fact, that it was brought back for a very brief revival in 2018. We say brief because the show lasted just two months before Barr was fired. On May 29th, Barr made a racist comment about Valerie Jarrett on Twitter, who had just finished her role as senior advisor to the president. The tweet garnered immediate controversy, and ABC canceled Roseanne that very same day. Huge in the ratings, making a lot of money for ABC. For them to so swiftly cancel this show, uh, they're going to take a hit. The mysterious death of George Reeves. Before Christopher Reeve donned the red and blue of the Man of Steel, George Reeves played him on the syndicated Adventures of Superman. The first Superman television show, it ran for six seasons between 1952 and 1958. The next year, Reeves died of a mysterious gunshot wound. Reeves had supposedly taken his own life inside his LA home, the result of depression and feelings of failure. But this finding has long been contested and debated. Some have theorized that famed Hollywood fixer Eddie Mannix was involved. Others point to Reeves' fiance, Leonore Lemon. We'll likely never know what truly happened. And for now, we just have to accept the potentially bogus self-harm theory. And now, another exciting episode in the adventures of Superman. The cancelled makeover of Delise Williams. Tonight, a My Fair Lady makeover. More extreme than any done before. I would just love to be able to look at myself and see a whole different person. Extreme Makeover was an ABC program that saw ordinary people undergoing plastic surgery to attain their dream appearance. Needless to say, the show garnered much controversy in its day, and it even resulted in a death. A Texas woman named Delise Williams was slated to appear on the show. 
Producers arrived at her hometown and goaded family members into saying awful things about Williams' physical appearance. She was in the next room listening in for reaction shots. But Williams' spot was canceled at the last minute owing to scheduling conflicts, and she had already heard the nasty things that were said about her. Williams' sister, Kelly McGee, was so distraught and guilt-ridden over what she had said that she took her own life. The Quiz Show Scandals Dan Enright came to see me in my kitchen, and he said, uh, How'd you like to make $25,000? And I said, who wouldn't? It was the late 1950s, and television was still a very young industry. Enter the producers of various game shows, who wished to increase ratings and make stars out of their players by fixing the games. These are now called the quiz show scandals, and they threatened the very integrity of television. While these scandals rocked numerous shows, the most infamous story involved 21 and contestants Herb Stemple and Charles Van Doren. Reigning champion Stemple was instructed to throw the game so Van Doren could win, and he went on to enjoy his own famous winning streak. Both would later testify in front of Congress, which in turn amended the law to prevent future cheating on TV game shows. See, I don't think an adult of your intelligence ought to be commended for simply, at long last, telling the truth. The Poor Horses I Guess I still know a peach when I see one. The HBO horse racing drama Luck had a slew of talent behind it. It was created by David Milch of Deadwood fame, and the pilot was directed by Michael Mann and it starred Dustin Hoffman in the lead role. Yet, it only lasted nine episodes. The show was actually picked up for a second season, but it was then revealed that the show's racehorses had suffered numerous tragedies. Two horses had died during production of the first season, as they suffered fractures during runs and were subsequently euthanized. A third horse died while filming the second season, prompting HBO to suspend production and launch an investigation. The show was then canceled, with HBO claiming that they didn't want any more accidents to occur. Good girl. No girls allowed. Amy Allen, I'm Hannibal Smith. I understand you want to hire the A-Team. One of the most popular shows of the 80s, the A-Team followed the adventures of four mercenaries working in Los Angeles. Nothing screams 80s machismo quite like it. And perhaps unsurprisingly, women had a very difficult time working on the show. The first two seasons starred Melinda Coolia as reporter Amy Allen. Coolia often voiced her displeasure at playing second fiddle to the A-Team and asked for more to do, and she was fired as a result. In came Marla Heasley to replace her as Tanya Baker, but she was quickly dropped also and was never even added to the opening credits. Most people lay blame at the feet of George Peppard, who reportedly insisted that no female be given a lead role. Now, if you wanted somebody with good manners, you should have hired an English butler. Tommy Cooper dies on live TV. As for our producers, empty cloth for live ducks. <laughs> <laughs> I got away again. A popular English musician, Tommy Cooper saw great success throughout the 60s and 70s by appearing on numerous television programs. Unfortunately, his health began to suffer in the late 70s, owing to excessive drinking and cigar smoking, resulting in tragedy on the night of April 15, 1984. Cooper was performing on a variety show called Live From Her Majesty's when he suddenly collapsed. The audience laughed at the sight of Cooper falling over, believing that it was part of his comedic act. In reality, Cooper had suffered a fatal heart attack. The show continued as people tried to revive Cooper off stage, and he was eventually taken to Westminster Hospital. Unfortunately, he was declared DOA, having died in front of 12 million viewers. And you put your hand inside the bag, and you bring the egg out to thunderous applause. <laughs> The Glee Curse. And I know that there have been a lot of memorials for him, but I had this made and I was hoping that we could hang it in here. Despite being one of the most popular shows of the 2010s, Glee has left behind a questionable legacy. That has nothing to do with the show itself, but the actors who were at the helm. Many dark and disturbing things have either befallen the young cast or been perpetrated by them. Regarding the latter, Mark Salling pleaded guilty to some horrific crimes in 2017 and later took his own life. 
It has also been reported that Blake Jenner was physically abusive towards his then wife, Melissa Benoist, even giving her a permanent eye injury. But horrible things have also happened to the actors. Corey Monteith died in 2013 from a drug overdose, and Naya Rivera later drowned while boating with her son in California's Lake Piru. The Demise of Phil Hartman Hi, I'm Troy McClure. You may remember me from such films as The Greatest Story Ever Hooled and They Came to Burgle Carnegie Hall. A television legend, Phil Hartman drew widespread acclaim for his work on shows like Saturday Night Live, News Radio, and The Simpsons. But throughout the 1990s, Hartman was in a strained relationship with Brim Omdahl, his third wife. Omdahl suffered from substance use disorder and would often behave erratically, sometimes even violently. While Hartman was advised to leave Omdahl, he never did so. Tragically, in the early morning hours of May 28, 1998, an inebriated Omdahl shot and killed Hartman while he slept. After confessing to numerous people and drawing police attention, Omdahl locked herself in the bedroom and took her own life as well. The Unsolved Murder of Bob Crane We're running a little bit behind times. Pass the word around. Football game is off. Oh, no, Colonel. I was supposed to play fullback today. <laughs> fullback? Now I know we've got to get the game canceled. <laughs> After running a successful radio show, Bob Crane moved on to acting and found work on Hogan's Heroes. The popular sitcom ran for six seasons, with Crane playing the titular Colonel Robert Hogan. But when the show came to an end in 1971, Crane struggled to find work and began doing dinner theater. By 1978, Crane was living in Arizona and doing a show called Beginner's Luck. On June 29th, Crane missed a meeting, prompting one of his co-stars to visit him at his apartment. There, they found Crane's dead body, which had been both bludgeoned and strangled. Blame fell on his friend, John Henry Carpenter, but he was acquitted in court. While some continue to point the finger at Carpenter, the murder is officially unsolved. Hey, you need a ride tomorrow to the airport? I, uh, I got a luncheon at noon. John? Don't bother. An unfortunate guest. And I really didn't want to get in the car, um, but I was raised to respect my elders. You never know what types of people will show up on game shows. The dating game typically saw a woman asking questions to three men sitting behind a partition. She would then pick the man she liked the most, meet him face to face, and then go on a date. In 1978, a photographer named Rodney Alcala appeared on the show and won a date with Cheryl Bradshaw. However, she found him creepy and refused the date, and for good reason. By this time, Alcala had killed at least four women and served years in prison for sexual assault. He would kill even more after his appearance on the dating game, bringing his official body count to eight. Some believe it could be as high as 130. I'm called the banana, and I look really good. <laughs> Bill Cosby. Did you ever think that this day was going to come? I've dreamt of this day for 32 years. It's amazing how fast a reputation can plummet. For many years, Bill Cosby was regarded as America's dad, winning over millions with his work on The Cosby Show. But allegations of sexual abuse followed Cosby throughout most of his career, with the earliest instance dating back to the mid-60s. These allegations continued into the 21st century, with the most legally formidable coming in 2004. It was then that a woman named Andrea Constand accused Cosby of sexual abuse. While most of Cosby's crimes fell outside the statutes of limitations, Constance did not, and it was her case that briefly sent the comedian to prison. It is now believed that Cosby had been assaulting women for decades, even while serving as America's dad. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. The world loses Steve Irwin. Have a look at this. What a beautiful lizard. You're all right, mate. A popular wildlife expert and conservationist, Steve Irwin found unbelievable success on television as the crocodile hunter. 
He hosted the TV series of the same name, but also appeared on other programs, including the nature documentary Ocean's Deadliest. It was while filming this show that Irwin met his tragic demise. The host approached a short tail stingray, which proceeded to sting him in the chest. Unfortunately, the barb got him directly in the heart, and Irwin quickly bled to death. The accident was captured on video, but the footage has never been released. Irwin's memorial service was held two weeks after his death and was watched by 300 million people around the world. Today's memorial service is a celebration of a man who's touched our lives and changed the world.